concert this year is an interesting idea in terms of what we're doing um, in terms of the whole idea of us doing obscure music because the program we have which consists of the RAF 10th Symphony and the Henselt Piano Concerto if it was a hundred years ago and you were going to the New York Philharmonic and you heard that they were going to do Joachim Raff's 10th Symphony and Henselt's Piano Concerto you'd go oh standard repertoire but, like the passenger pigeon's death in 1914, we have this sudden death in 1908 of the music of Raff. As for the Henselt, the Henselt Concerto died round about World War I, and I have various theories about why it died. But one of the things that was interesting is that does bring you up to the question of why does some music survive and why has others died? Why do we not hear the Raff symphonies? Why is it that most of the people who are going to be listening to what I'm saying right now may not have even heard of Joachim Raff? And yet, during his lifetime, he was considered the equal of Brahms. As a matter of fact, Tchaikovsky considered him a better composer than Brahms. Wrote 11 symphonies, phenomenal music, really, really original, fabulous composer. Top Franz Liszt, how to orchestrate. It was Johannes Brahms who was picked to become the representative of German music. Ironically, Raff's good friend, Hans von Bülow, who is partly responsible for that because he deemed Brahms the third B, saying Bach, Beethoven, and Brahms are the three greatest composers. And he thought, by the way, equally of Raff. He thought Raff was Brahms' equal, but his name didn't begin with B, so there we go. And I think there's an element of that in terms of the survival of the music. He was a much better orchestrator than Brahms. Brilliantly original orchestration. Tremendous melodies. Tremendous sense of, of, of variety. But he was a remarkable composer, and his music definitely deserves to be heard. The irony is the 10th symphony, the one that we're doing, which is called the Autumn Symphony, has several things about it that make it remarkable. And there's one thing about it that makes it probably memorable to many people. And I'm going to play a little excerpt from the slow movement. And I bet there's going to be something about it you might like. Henselt was one of the most remarkable characters of the 19th century and he's one of the most influential musicians who you've never heard of. Now if you're a pianist you've at least heard the name or if you're a pianist knows anything about the history of the piano. He was considered Liszt's equal and in the 1830s and 40s he was considered one of the best living pianists. Exceedingly nervous performer. He he was suffered such horrible stage fright that he basically used to sit back in the wings and when a concerto was playing, he'd wait for the tootie to be over before diving out and pouncing on the piano because of his fear of the public and in the last 30 years of his life barely performed at all. But he developed a radical new piano style and that piano style not only was it radically new, it's the most influential Compo uh, influential uh, composer pianist ever because the entire Russian school comes out of the innovations of the type 
of piano writing that Henselt began. The music of Rachmaninoff, Scriabin, for that matter, Tchaikovsky would have been inconceivable without Henselt. And why was this so? Because when he was 30 years old, he went to St. Petersburg, met the Tsar, became his buddy. They used to go jogging together. And he became in charge of the piano instruction for the entire Russian Empire and assigned his own etudes as music that every piano student in the empire studied. So, as a result, all of the great Russian composers were versed in Henselt's music. His piano concerto was played throughout the 19th century and it disappeared around World War I. And it was kind of an unusual disappearance. You're wondering, why would this piece, that's a tremendously gorgeous piece, very, very effective, why would it have disappeared? And I have a theory, I can't prove it, but it's an interesting theory, which is that it was the advent of recordings. You see, the music of Henselt is very difficult to play, but it's very easy to fake. So as a result, I deeply suspect that many of those 19th century pianists who were playing the concerto were playing, shall we say, a paraphrase of the notes that Henselt wrote. Well, once there were recordings out there, it's there for eternity, and you could check the score and find out what notes have been changed and which notes are missing. So people stopped playing it. And that's why, although it was popular in 1914, when recordings were already made, nobody made a recording of that, it then dropped from the repertoire, and the first recording was made in 1975. Well, that's why, I think. And, but the influence that he had, I think, will be very evident from two things I will play. One is the opening of the concerto. Sound familiar? Ah, yes, the Rachmaninoff C sharp minor prelude. It's the same. Change the key. That's all you've got. And it, throughout that piece, there are tributes. Throughout the Rachmaninoff prelude, there are tributes to Hansel, whose concerto he knew and studied and played. 